Okay, uh, this is a review and analysis of a, a really interesting light bulb called the Switch 60. Uh, it's the uh, first A-type light bulb um, which claims that it can be used in any light fixture, including ones which are uh, enclosed. Um, that's a big deal, actually. Uh, electronics don't like getting hot, and when you enclose them, their life shortens dramatically. So this company's come up with what they uh, claim to be a fairly innovative approach. Um, to sort of compare and contrast, this unit's 60 watts. Uh, it's a warm white, 2700 uh, Kelvin. Uh, we'll compare it against the uh, the very famous Philips bulb. Uh, this is the uh, ambient LED. It's been out for a number of years. Um, it also is a 60 watt rated unit with the same uh, warm white uh, attributes. Um, and we'll also take a look uh, at uh, the Cree 60 watt LED. Uh, same thing, all claiming uh, 800 lumens um, and a nominal uh, output equivalent to a traditional 60 watt light bulb. And uh, because uh, these all bulbs are trying to replace the uh, soon-to-be-outlawed uh, incandescent light bulb, uh, here is a brand new box from Philips of some uh, Duramax uh, light bulbs. Okay, well how do you evaluate the light bulb? Well, you have to make some measurements. Um, I guess that's one thing you don't see a lot in YouTube videos. A lot of people just uh, buy these bulbs, they uh, screw them into lamp sockets, and of course they create some light, and it's not terribly... Uh, illuminating as to uh, whether or not there's actually any differences between it. First measurement tool, uh, simply a light meter. Uh, they all claim to be 100 lumens of output. Um, a light meter can help uh, determine whether or not there is some truth of that claim. Uh, after that, uh, of course, they all uh, talk about the fact they draw uh, less electricity. So um, that's uh, the really the well realm of a, a watt-hour meter. This is the consumer grade kilowatt. Uh, it's an RMS meter though, so it should give us a first good uh, indication. Moving on to the electrical theme, uh, use a clamping multimeter um, with a, um, an oscilloscope probe output, put on the oscilloscope. Um, that'll allow uh, one to evaluate uh, the current draw of the bulb. They're all going to have switching regulators inside them. They're all going to create uh, electromagnetic interference, both conducted and radiated. Um, take a look at see if there's any differences between them. And uh, for the switch bulb especially, uh, this is actually uh, um, a IR thermometer. Um, although I'll probably use also some K-type thermocouples and a, uh, a meter like this to measure uh, the temperature of the LEDs because, of course, that's the other thing that's uh, really claimed as the defining feature of the switch bulb is that it keeps the electronics cool and that will definitely result in a longer life. That's pretty important because um, these bulbs are still uh, pretty expensive items. Uh, and last thing, uh, do some weight, weight measurements. Um, these manufacturers don't necessarily claim uh, there's better carbon uh, footprints of these bulbs, but... Um, there's uh, the counterpart to carbon footprint not drawing much, as much electricity to generate the uh, carbon. These bulbs require energy to create. Now, actually, I live in a world, part of the world where almost all the electricity is generated by hydroelectric uh, dams. So, uh, this bulb here, though, is made in a region almost certainly where uh, the electricity would be either nuclear or coal-based, uh, which, of course, all create uh, pollution. So, uh, am I just simply buying this bulb and trading off uh, the pollution from where I live to where it was made? Okay, here it is. This is the uh, Switch 60 LED light bulb. Now up here, of course, is obviously where the LEDs are. You may be able to see faintly the uh, yellow uh, outlines of the actual light emitting diodes. What's really special about this bulb, though, is these LEDs are actually closed in a liquid inside of this uh, translucent sphere. And what will happen is the LED gets hot, of course, it'll cause the liquid to create a circulatory motion that will actually allow heat to be transferred uh, from the LED to the surface of the bulb and then radiate outwards. Um, and that's a big deal because the electronics become much more reliable the lower the temperature differential you put onto them. So that's the really outstanding feature of the bulb and it'll actually, in theory, allow it to be used inside a enclosed uh, fixture. Uh, unlike, for example, uh, the Philips bulb, which is actually quite explicit that you uh, cannot use this inside a uh, enclosed fixture. Now that's the problem. I've actually got a whole bunch of these in my home. I really like them a lot, but uh, almost all my lights in the ceiling of the house I have, uh, unfortunately, are enclosed, and that really prohibits me from using these. Or if I use them, uh, I expect their service life would be uh, pretty dramatically shortened. So. Okay, first test. This is the uh, switch LED light bulb drawing. It uh, looks like 13.7 watts. Uh, the voltage in my home here is about 119 volts. Uh, obviously, I'm in North America. I'm uh, drawing about 120 milliamps, and of course, that results in a 13.7 uh, watts. And the power factor is uh, 0 0.93. 
Okay, use the uh, kilowatt meter basics then to uh, go through all the bulbs uh, one by one. Uh, the Cree bulb, uh, which is this one here, uh, it drew 9.8 watts and had a power factor of uh, 0 0.96. Uh, it was the most energy efficient bulb. Uh, that was followed up by the uh, Phillips bulb that uh, drew 12.8 uh, watts. Uh, the switch LED coming in at 13.7 uh, watts. And then of course the traditional uh, incandescent light bulb at 60.6 .6 watts. So, uh, if these bulbs all produce the same amount of light, uh, the bulb here that we're looking at today, the switch bulb actually uh, would be the worst of all three. Okay, next test. Uh, obviously I have a light bulb here. It's been clamped to a fixed position above the table. Uh, I'm going to put the light meter below at the very bottom here. I'll put it also at a fixed position and of course um, while well, I'll keep everything constant, I'll just simply change the light bulb and then I'll measure the number of lux. Lux, of course, is uh, the number of lumens per square meter. If these bulbs are all 2700 uh, Kelvin and they're all producing the same number of lumens, uh, my meter should re read the exact same value. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, measured light intensity in the vertical orientation. Uh, the dimmest bulb was the Cree, followed up by the traditional incandescent bulb. Uh, here's the switch bulb, and uh, in the lead was the Phillips. So, at least in that orientation, it was uh, uh, no contest, actually. This one was uh, significantly brighter. Okay, so for the uh, other orientation, it's the same scheme. Basically, I've got, um, I'm just using the kilowatt meter as a, uh, a mechanically sturdy way of mounting the, mounting the bulb. It's on a um, reasonably sturdy wooden shelf. Uh, and then, as usual, below, I will uh, put the light meter uh, down in an exact fixed position and of course I will not move it so I'm trying to compare apples to apples. I'll turn the lights off in my workshop so there's no other sources of light here and uh, we'll see if the amount of light coming out of the bulbs is different. Okay so here's the results for the uh, horizontal orientation. You can see they're a lot tighter um, which is kind of what I was expecting um, since these are all claiming to be 800 uh, lumen bulbs. Okay, so um, this setup, uh, obviously an oscilloscope uh, in the corner here, and uh, just a simple scope probe attached to it. Um, it's just looped back on itself, so basically it's looking for um, electromagnetic energy. You can see the scope is picking up uh, noisy in my lab right now. There's probably another switching power supply nearby. Uh, no surprise. Now, this bulb, of course, has a switching power supply. It's not unique. Uh, they all do, of course. Um, but it's a good example of what's going to happen here as uh, everyone converts over into... Uh, this kind of technology. Uh, of course, if you look at the scope here, there's some noise being already been picked up from other, other electronics in my lab. And, uh, of course, you plug it in and you can even see more noise. So, nothing, I can't find anything remarkable about this, but, um, again, it's one of those things that's going to uh, introduce a lot of noise. So, if you do a lot of electronics measurement, uh, pay attention now if you've got LED bulbs uh, on your bench. Uh, they're also going to be another noise source. Okay, bulb weight. Um, no surprise, the switch uh, bulb is actually the heaviest. You can see I've listed there all the uh, weights of the bulb as we go down the, the list. Um, weight's not all that important in a light bulb in a domestic application, but um, it talks about something which is even more interesting, which is um, all these bulbs require obviously a lot of energy to actually be manufactured. You have uh, mechanical casings, which uh, are metal, of course, poured. If one pops open the uh, remote emitters in the uh, Phillips bulb, for example, you're going to see some LEDs, a fairly significant dye area. And uh, all those LEDs, of course, require uh, actually a, a stunning amount of energy to actually create. You have to create a large wafer. Uh, you got to saw it. you got to do a bunch of chemical processing. Uh, there's all sorts of really interesting articles on the internet about photo photovoltaic panels and how much energy they actually create require to create uh, well before they generate even a single watt of electricity. Kind of the reverse here, but um, the uh, simple light bulb here, of course, actually ironically requires the very least amount of energy to create because it actually has very, very thin glass and, of course, nothing but uh, a little bit of tungsten inside of it. Uh, yet these very, very complicated bulbs actually require a tremendous amount of natural resources. Now, of course, the argument is that these bulbs, of course, should last a tremendously long period of time. And the switch bulb especially, because of its uh, 
dedication towards uh, maintaining a good thermal environment, uh, there should be some truth to that. This bulb should last long. In fact, the manufacturer is offering a, what appears to be quite a quite an extraordinary warranty on it. To okay, so uh, the bulb's been running for quite some time. This is the uh, the switch LED bulb. I'm shielding the camera a bit because the camera is really struggling with such a bright light source. But more importantly, you can actually see that uh, I'm actually holding on to the bulb. Um, that's pretty incredible. Since this bulb, of course, is producing what used to be the equivalent of a 60-watt incandescent bulb, you would certainly burn your hand on that. Uh, more importantly, uh, the actual surface of the uh, LED's uh, enclosure is actually quite cool, uh, which really gives some credence to uh, the idea that the LEDs are being held at a really decent temperature. Now, the actual body, uh, which has the switching power supply, is, is getting quite a bit Okay, uh, last test here is uh, bulb temperature. It's a K-Tech thermocouple that you can see in the lab here today. It's about 25 above centigrade. I'm going to measure the surface of the bulb uh, at the LED and then measure the hottest point where the switching electronics lies. Now, I'm not going to epoxy the probes on right now, so the measurements will be a little bit of an estimate. And uh, the real measurement to do in the switch bulb, of course, is to actually uh, drill a hole and uh, measure the LED. Uh, but there's a few more tests I'd like to run the bulb before I, uh, I destroy it. So I'll do some quick measurements here and see if, there, if there's any meaningfully significant difference in temperature. Okay, so here's the uh, temperature table. Um, obviously the incandescent light bulb uh, right at the very top there at 132 degrees, no surprise. Um, and then uh, the Cree bulb and switch bulb all similar in the felt a bit above that. Now, the real measurement of course is right at the surface of the LED because that really determines the reliability. But um, uh, that'll have to wait uh, until I actually take the bulb apart. Okay, well, that was a quick look at uh, the Switch 60 light bulb. It seems to be pretty comparable to what it's trying to replace, which is the incandescent bulb. Uh, it seems to be pretty comparable to the uh, Philips bulb. Um, for whatever reason, the Cree bulb certainly doesn't seem to be in the same category as these two bulbs. It's uh, definitely not uh, consuming as much electricity and definitely not producing uh, as many lumens, at least on the equipment I'm measuring. So, hopefully that was an interesting video.